All right, welcome back to the channel. We had a real fun time plowing last weekend. I think the weather cooperated about as good as it could, and then we had snow this week, and well, there's no way we could have plowed this weekend. But anyway, last weekend I wanted to take this to work down the ground, and then I alluded to that there was a problem. And so now I finally have calmed down enough of, I don't know that it was calmed down enough. I'm able to talk about it now. So the week or so before that, I was checking fluids on this, getting ready to go. And I checked the main transmission up uh, underneath the cab there. And uh, it's got a check plug. So like every other Moline, the uh, check plug for, for this one is right in there and so i'm like cool so it was well below that and i filled it up not a problem i come out last weekend we we're going to work on adjusting the brakes which we did and uh, i noticed that the front of the front axle housing was wet with oil and i was like huh wonder why that happened so you can kind of see down in there it's still a little wet it's kind of hard to see probably because it's uh, down in there, but anyway, it was wet, so it was leaking. And uh, I didn't know what to think about that, so I obviously the seal between the transmission and the bell housing there was leaking, letting it come down the shaft. So um, we moved the tractor around. I was trying to test the brakes, and all of a sudden the clutch started slipping. So when I went to back it up into the spot that it's sitting in right now it got to this point and literally it was almost not moving so pretty unhappy because the fix for that everybody's like oh you got to split it as we just saw in my other video that's not a thing you got to pull the motor which means you got to take off the radiator the hydraulic tank you just got to go down through and it is a ordeal on them not real happy about that so this week talked to joe pro he said well can you spray anything up in there can you get like anything up in there to help clean off the clutch discs and I uh, maybe you know and, and then I was at work and uh, I was talking to our maintenance guy of our building he's uh, kind of got cattle and stuff down in southern Ohio and we started talking about it and he said well can you block off the plate on the bottom and uh, put mineral spirits or something in there and, and so I really started thinking about it. it was a brilliant idea so I think what I've come up with, and if this works, great. And if it doesn't, I'm not out a whole lot, just a little bit of maybe $60, $80 in fluids. But I'm gonna come down here underneath and show you. So back there is the plate at the bottom. And most tr molding tractors, that's where you adjust. You can kind of reach up in and adjust the fingers. On this one, I don't know what purpose it serves other than uh, it's it's there. So, because the way the transmission is, you can't really get up in there. So I took an old inner tube, doubled it over, and put it up on that underneath that plate, and bolted my plate down. So my plate's underneath that. You can kind of see the inner tube. I can't really reach in there. But what I'm going to do is where that funnel is up there. Is I'm going to dump like a gallon of uh, uh, you know degreaser in there, like purple power or something like that and I'm gonna start it the flywheel is just you know a gallon should be plenty is gonna grab that hopefully fling it all around in there and uh, get it up against the clutch disc everything kind of and I'm gonna do that a couple times and then that my idea is I'm going to then turn to using I'll do that like twice and then use some diesel fuel and uh, finish the last two times with diesel and between each time i'll take that plate loose enough in order to let it drain out and then i'll do diesel a couple times and then uh, that will kind of get rid of the water-based stuff in there for rust reasons and uh, but the diesel is also a good thing to use for uh kind of breaking down grease and oil so um i'm gonna try it i mean what am i out my time, if it works, it's awesome. If it doesn't, oh well. Um, but one thing I want to do before I do all that is I'm going to start this and warm up the motor so that once I dump it in, that's not completely watertight down there at that plate. It does drip some 
and so I want to dump the gallon in and then immediately be able to jump up and start it and um, and then you know get it get it running and uh, uh, right away so that it sloshes that around in there sorry having a hard time thinking because one thing I forgot to mention is so then this week you know there was a whole lot of talk about well why and I guess that seal's got to be bad but the other thing that Joe Pro brought up he found an old service manual or a bulletin from 1973 and it clearly shows on the side of that transmission that there's two check plugs the second one and I don't it's so hard to see but it's down in there kind of behind the linkage there's a little bolt there and it clearly says in the service bulletin do not fill to the top plug it'll cause cavitation in the oil and all kinds of problems only fill to the bottom plug so one thing i did this week is i got that bottom plug out i got five gallon buckets out here with funnels and i drained drained this one down and i drained the one down in the barn and i can say reaching that bottom plug is not fun like i'm literally laying on top of the tire shoving a hand down in there with a foot on the step and the other foot swinging around and uh yeah not fun but i got this one drained down took like six gallons out of it and then i had done the same thing with the the one we just dropped the motor in and, and luckily it wasn't leaking so i cracked it open and, and drained it and uh yeah, I still got a mess here. I got to get all this stuff over to Oliver Phil to make me new lines for this. But I, uh, you can see by the oil dry that I had a funnel inside the five gallon bucket and it was just a small, it wasn't like it was flowing out. So I went out to check the other one. I came back in and it had filled up the funnel so the bucket wasn't burping and I had 80, 90 all over. But on this one, in order to get, get to it, same place. But this, these tires are set in closer. I couldn't get my arm at the right angle, so I had to go down on the ground and reach up uh, from below, which my old shoulders don't love because you're reaching kind of in an odd angle up over your head. But I got the plug back in this one after it drained out. And so now, now we're good, except I got to sweep up my oil dry from everything that leaked. So anyway... We're going to go out and I'm going to start this thing and warm it up. And then uh, once it's warm, I've got to head the water heater going for a couple hours now just to help help it start. And it is, uh, it's like 41, 42. It likes to be a little bit warmer. And then uh, I'll shut her down and we're going to dump a gallon in. And uh, we're just going to see what happens here. I don't know. It's either going to be good, it's going to be bad, or I guess it can't be bad. I mean, I can't really hurt anything. So... Here we go. All right, got it running. Good oil pressure, obviously that's always a good sign. Maybe just to show you guys, we'll just see if it does it today. They did this the other day, it acted like it didn't want to go in here. We will 
I'll shut her down and go out and dump. I can say I was pretty, pretty downtrodden about this. I just, I, this one was just, uh, I was just getting it exactly where I wanted it to be. I was looking forward to using it at the plow day. I had a bunch of people that were excited about seeing it at plow day. And then this happened. So what are you gonna do? So I got super, I got purple power and I got uh, super clean. So we're gonna start with super clean. No reason other than it's easier to get to. I'm gonna try not to knock over the camera here. is really not doing a good job of holding it in there but we're gonna try it anyway all right let's go start it and see what happens there's a bunch in there Ugh. Stupid GoPro battery says it's at 55% and then it goes to zero, like right now. So anyway, it's moving. It's not shifting quite right. I gotta throttle it down and it'll go in. Wasn't doing that before. I tried to adjust the linkage, that didn't really help, so I just put it back. It's talking to Joe Pro. I just called him to let him know that I had a little bit of success. His suggestion was to try to seal up the plate a little bit better. And then wash it some more. So I think what I'm going to do is some measuring where that plate is, where it's leaking. So you tighten down the ends, and they're good. It's leaking out of the middle. So it's almost like I need to put some wood across there and then like a wedge and kind of push up on that in the middle a little bit, which will help seal it. I need to keep the fluid in there longer in order to it let it wash a little bit better. But... The main thing is, is that it was still slipping in fourth and fifth a little, but it's moving. And last week in reverse, moved backing it in here. Man, it, it barely, I barely got it to where it is. So anyway, I don't want to whack my head. 
Um, all right, now I need to pull out the trailer, the little trailer for tomorrow. Uh, I'm gonna go over see my buddy Bruce. Bruce, I can speak Bruce. He's gonna say his last name, which has a F in it, so Bruce. Anyway, I'm gonna see Bruce over at Mount Vernon. He's got an Oliver 348 four bottom semi mount plow that he doesn't need any more and he wanted to sell and I think uh, that'd be great behind the 955 or the 950 and uh, so I'm gonna run over tomorrow and uh, grab it bring it back here it's gonna actually go live over at Oliver Phil's so he can fit it inside one of his little little barns and um, so tomorrow I'll take you along to go over to see Bruce and uh, then I know that this I've seen pictures of the plow he's had it sitting a place where it's got a lot of algae you know it just sat for a couple years anyway i'm going to do a quick power wash on it tomorrow clean it up some and then uh yeah then i'll get back working on this um the evenings during the week when i have time to come out here and play with this but i got to get all this over to all of our fill the rear lift cylinders these cylinders got to get everything over to them at some point so uh i think that's all i'm going to get done today because it's going to be getting dark here soon and uh until tomorrow when we go get a plow i also got to say i almost forgot to say but this week nick ohio mm called he was concerned about his a4t why it wasn't what was wrong with it because i only teased last weekend that it had an issue so I had a good talk with nick ohio mm uh assured him that one way or the other his a4t will be okay and uh so I think that put him at ease. He then told me what he wanted for Christmas. And, uh, but he did ask me to teach him how to shoot at some point when he comes to visit, which we can, I can definitely do that. Teach him the proper way, the safe way, and uh, get him started right. Just get him started young, get him started right. I think that's the key to almost everything in life. All right, now I'm done for today. All right, it's Sunday. We're running over to get this plow. Um, kind of another cloudy day. A little chilly out over in the hilly part of... It's not the hilly part of the state of Ohio, but it's, there are some hills over this way. A lot more hills than where, uh, where I live. Anyway, I uh, don't know if you watched any uh, college football yesterday, but I think the stage is set for Moline Dan and I's... Uh, bet for next weekend the big game of Ohio State versus that uh, cheating team from up north and uh, it's kind of crazy that their records like six and five this year after winning a national championship I, I don't know raises some questions about uh, how you do when you cheat and how you do when you're not cheating I don't know that's just an Ohio State guy talking so ignore it if you're a fan for that team. Anyway, should be a good game next Saturday. Looking forward to it. Thanksgiving's coming this week. Um, we'll see how that goes. But anyway, I'm going to finish out this drive over there and hopefully we'll get this thing loaded. And I misspoke yesterday. I said it was uh, Oliver 348. It's not a 348. It's a 548, which makes a whole lot more sense. Um, I mean, they did make it 348, but this is a 548. So clarify that and uh yeah we're uh we're on our way so we'll see you here in a little bit after i get around this turn well made it over here and the neighbor brought his loader tractor over and we got this thing loaded up very easily uh fits on there pretty well um we're up you see bruce has just got a beautiful view from his place up here looks out over kind of the valley I've seen him when he posts pictures online but anyway Oliver 548 four bottom and uh, the, he's basically got new bottoms on this he replaced those a few years ago it's just been sitting outside and uh, but yeah it's a nice nice plow so we're really happy to get this uh, yeah, and it's just a beautiful, he's just got a beautiful view up here. So we're going to go look at his tractors. All right, we walked around here. Bruce has got a 66 302 propane, narrow front. Uh, nice tractor. He said he's got some propane leaking out of it. So 
he needs to figure that out but this is a really nice original here and it's got the uh the belt pulley on it which is pretty cool and uh yeah this is a nice nice original 302 propane here it's got new tires on it and uh on the front and the back and uh, yeah this is that's pretty cool Let's see down the other side here but yeah it's a nice nice tractor my uh fenders are nice and straight and nice to see here we are at the back side of it so you can see the belt pulley a little bit better and uh, you don't see that on very many of them it's got the toolbox original seat and uh yeah it's uh it's got power adjust wheels on it which i'm sure was an option so it's pretty pretty neat and then he's got a moline quick hitch back here so did you where'd you find the quick hitch or did you just it came up on a sale up on a sale yeah that's always good somebody was gonna probably scrap it and you picked it up. I picked it up. You know how that is. Perfect. Out here in Bruce's yard, he's got this old McCormick Deering uh, steel wheel. He uh, said somebody offered this to him a few years ago, and he brought it home. And his wife thought this was a good spot for it on this concrete pad. But he said the rear wheels are locked up. So it's a real pain to move it with those steel wheels on there, which I can only imagine. But uh, that's pretty neat. But... The sun has come out, and you can see here Bruce's view. I mean, just beautiful area. But he's going over to get the John Deere uh, loader. Um, sold me that quick hitch that we were just looking at. And rather than carry that big heavy thing all the way over to the trailer, we're going to do the smart thing. Use the loader. All right, all loaded up. Heading out. Again, Bruce has got... He's got a long driveway, but he, his view makes uh, oh, beautiful, beautiful area over here for sure. And uh, yeah, we talked more about his 302 and different things. Great guy, and uh, I'm glad he's a friend. And uh, this has been fun. So we're gonna go home, and I'm gonna probably try to get the pressure washer out and just clean this thing up a little bit. And. Uh, then uh, see what else I can get done today. I don't know that I'll get a much, much more done. I do want to seal up that plate on the bottom of the A4T better and then get more fluid in there so it really sloshes around in there and gets that cleaned up a little better. That's, that's on the list and it's going to get really cold next weekend so uh, I'll be below freezing so it's either going to be with diesel or, or whatever. I won't be able to use water-based stuff but we'll see how that goes. So all right, I'm going to pay attention to my driving and uh, we'll get home and get this thing cleaned up. All right, made it home all right. Um, got the power washer set up. I'm about ready to hose it down with some uh, stuff I use on the house when I get the green algae crap like some back tire there if you can see it and uh, kind of all over this. I get that growing on the house every once in a while and I have a concoction that I'll spray on there and then uh, power wash it off and at least clean this up a little bit before we put it away for the winter. The uh, bottoms are in great shape on this spruce. Basically rebuilt the bottoms on this at some point not too long ago, three or four years ago. And uh, it uh, definitely shows, definitely, uh, this thing will plow well so anyway i'm gonna hit it with uh, the power washer and i'll bring you guys back after i hit it and uh, we'll see how she looks then well the not so awesome thing is i think the pressure washers could put it was kind of acting weird i got it started everything was running and it started and it shut down it was blowing white smoke i pulled the uh, dip stick out for the oil 
which I know that it's got oil in it. Let's see if it still does it. And what resulted was oil running out like that. Looks pretty watery. So I'm guessing seal failed between the pump and the motor or something and filled the crankcase with water. I don't know. This power washer is what, three years old? In the day and age when everything is uh, disposable, I guess that's acceptable. I don't know. Generac, 3100 PSI. Uh, anyway, so I just hosed off, uh, used the, the hose and washed it off, which still did with the mixture of bleach and everything else, did a pretty good job of moving a bunch of that crap off of there. So, uh, GoPro, battery die, no warning, 55% died, dead. So I'm guessing Black Friday, guess what's in my future? Probably a new camera. Anyway. Much better than it was. Uh, cleaner. It actually you can see the Oliver on there better. Uh, I did air up the back tire a little bit. I washed off the quick hitch just because it was a little dusty. Not that it really needed it. And walk around this side. Definitely better. You can see the Oliver up here a little more clearly. Just got a lot of the algae and crap off it. And it's just from being parked outside in an area that was kind of covered by trees. Um, just happens it happens to the house on the the uh, shady side of the house did clean off there's the cereal tag uh, although it's not I don't think it's all there it looks like it's half of it's missing but there's still some stuff up here like this but it's uh, it would come off with the power washer it's just the power washer gave up the ghost so um, but with the bleach in it should kill all that stuff but again i'm pretty happy with this uh i really appreciate bruce selling it to me because uh, i think this is going to be great behind the 955 and the 950 i could take the bottom the fourth bottom off if you wanted unbolt it here unbolt it there you move that section with the tail wheel up to here and then you have a three bottom but I probably won't do that. Uh, Oliver Phil, that's what his white is, is a, the three bottom version of this. Actually, his is a 508, so it's the previous version. On, I think the 548, the steel's thicker. Uh, they had problems breaking, breaking bottoms on, I think, on the 508 and the 548s. They went a little heavier duty. So, anyway, that's... Uh, plows here i'm gonna get the trailer parked over there i'll take the dollar for fills another day we'll unload it and he's gonna throw it in the barn over there and uh i gotta get the uh jet out and get that quick hitch in it i gotta throw this in the barn and look at it a little more closely but see what's really wrong with it but that quick hitch is pretty heavy i had to move it quite a bit by hand to get it out to where we get the loader on it and there's a lot of steel in that thing but well I think that's gonna do it I did decide I think I mentioned it we're gonna try to seal up the bottom plate on the A4T and we're gonna definitely try to put more fluid in there and clean that up more because it seems to be working and that's a cheap cheap fix if we can get that to work if not we'll pull the motor but uh, thanks again for watching Please like and subscribe, throw comments in if you got comments. And uh, I wish I could plow with this thing yet this year, but I think we're a little too wet now. So we'll uh, get another video going here soon and uh, we'll see you then.